All right. <clears throat> now let me flip this phone this way. What we got here is a split face travertine. I was looking online last night because, um, you know, I've set quite a bit of tile, and my first trade is actually a stucco drywall metal frame, and I was raised in that, so I stuck on all this, and then stuck all this travertine cap. Uh, it's quite the pool deck. It's a nice pool. Um, a five-man crew come in, took them, you know, took them quite a bit, so uh, I didn't get nothing but these walls and this cap and this travertine. And I got to looking online last night, uh, YouTube, and I said, man, I sure, because I was having trouble right here with this, this miter edge. And I said, man, let me see how everybody else finishes that stuff. Um, you know, this isn't something that I do every day. Uh, you know, you know, not a lot of people called and say, hey, I want to put $3,000 four thousand dollars worth of travertine on one two three walls but uh this guy did so anyways i didn't see anything on line about sticking this stuff on the outside or um you know how to miter these edges and how to uh, basically how to make these butt joints come together nice and uh or these miter joints so i said you know what let me go ahead and post something um maybe it'll help somebody because i did see one guy i can't remember the guy's name on there uh, but he was sticking some some tips on how to cut that airsoft stone which i've never worked with and uh, what he did show which i kind of already knew but um he had a chop saw he had a chop saw like this and uh he had I guess he had a diamond blade. He had some kind. He had a masonry blade, which is what that is. That's a 10-inch tile blade, uh, ceramic, porcelain, any kind of stone. So that'll miter your edges. Uh, kind of want to cut slow. This stone here is hard as a rock. <laughs> no pun intended. But um, you want to cut slow. You don't want to chip up the edges or anything like that. But uh, you can see I got this wall nearly finished. I'm going to have to... Uh, might have to rip down a few pieces of this stuff and uh, stick them up in there but anyway so what I did I just wanted to show this wall I wish I'd have, I started this when I was thinking about it earlier if I'd have thought about it but uh, what I did is I got me I started at my uh, had a high point down here and then I checked it and then I came off this wall and I wanted him to be, you know, pretty close. You know what I mean? I doubt anybody, I can almost guarantee nobody would walk in this walkway and catch that this wall is a half inch higher or lower than this wall. But, you know, if a guy spends this much money, you, you know, you, you charge him to do it right. So, anyhow, um, they are level across. Um, and all I did was I took this level, set it, um, set it even over there with this other wall, put a good line there, came on down, um, marked all the way down. That's only a four foot level. Truly an eight footer would be way better. Uh, but I was, you know, I was pretty cautious when I marked it out. Uh, I was very confident that it was nice and level. And then I had a guy, one of my guys, uh, clip the string line on that end, chalk line, and I put it on this end, and we popped it. Uh, and that sucker is, it's running nice and true. Um, but as you can see down here, you know, you got a big gap down there because it's level you know what I mean so um, you're gonna have to chalk it up if you get to a portion of a wall where it's you know basically you got to start from something true and level uh, your floor is not going to be true and level I'd be very surprised if it is you might not even be starting on the floor 
Uh, a lot of guys will run a ledger board, especially with tile, they'll run a ledger board, which is basically something that holds it up off the the floor or the base of the shower or something like that. And um, they will start from that. Once the thin set sets and the stone is secured to the wall, they'll pull that ledger board off and they will infill the bottom there. But um, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of doing that. Uh, I don't, I just, you know, I just like to start from the bottom and when that sucker is dead nuts level and true and stuck to the wall I can I can haul butt man and I can get it stuck you know what I mean kind of like this didn't take long on this wall what took long was getting that bottom row perfect and level um, a lot of guys will take and they'll pop a few more lines they'll mark their lines this travertine here comes on mesh it's I guess it's 18 by six inches and it's pretty true six inches all the way across the full piece of mesh uh, mosaic i guess um technically is what it'd be that's a piece of it there mitered down for that corner but um they'll pop lines you know what i mean you got six inches here so they'll go another six here another six down there and they'll pop a line it just kind of keeps you a gauge you know what i mean it's a great idea if you don't do it all the time definitely do it because what you don't want to have happen is you come back later and you go uh oh that doesn't look level or you know if you're do it yourself or there at the house uh, some you know the wife's got you sticking stone on the wall to, and then you, she catches it the next day and she's like is that level and then you're in trouble to inject so uh, you don't want to have to pull this stuff off the wall later. Uh, it's you know, it's, it's costly. It's not easy. And then uh, you got to get that wall back nice and flush and flat before you stick anything else on it. So uh, I would pop lines. Um, I've been running a piece, you know, especially on this wall. It's a little shorter. I've just been taking my four foot level, checking it. You know what I mean? Uh, another little tip and stuff on this is. Let me see here. Let's see, you got a piece. It interlocks right here. Let me see. Right here. Bang, bang, bang. So I set it and I make sure this part's here. That way I can set this. Just set it down. Um, and then, you know, you'll know if they're flush right here. You can tell, okay, so it's sitting good. And the next one, okay, it's nice and flush or sitting good. But especially on this on this first run because I mean technically this is the most important one on this first run you can see I got pieces of cardboard um, you know might not be ideal if you're not comfortable with it I would get maybe some wood shims something that doesn't give so much I'm confident that uh, you know I put a level on it and I watched it and I paid attention to it and I was can you see the bubble in the let's see you see it there yeah she's good so but I watched it I made sure she didn't move and slide and all that type of stuff because it will that thin set will let it move and shift and you'll come back in a couple hours later thinking you're gonna run a couple up and um, you got problems so uh, but when you're adjusting these things like where they interlock now you see I've got this level here goes across it says it's level but if you were to get up under that level and look on the bottom of that level and on the top of that stone there might be a itty bitty gap you know what i mean maybe eighth inch maybe 16th maybe it might even be you know what i mean just depending uh you got a gap there so what you're going to want to do is like i got that piece of cardboard there you're going to want to pick up that stone or whatever you're setting there and stuff it up in there and make sure you don't have any gap under that level because just because your level reads level from here to here I mean in the grand scheme of things yeah this thing might be level but you might have a dip in the center just because it's all mesh you know it'll sag in the center so you got to check you got to be real careful when you're putting that first run on there um, you know I'm I move pretty quick uh, you know, I've been working with mud mop. Camera went on the fritz there, the phone. Um, anyways, like I was saying, I've been doing this, you know, pretty long time.
but uh and it took me uh, i spent at least an hour and a half maybe maybe a little longer getting that sucker right you know what i mean so uh, be prepared to spend some time getting things level and true your corners you all, you need to plan that from the beginning how do you want to sit you want to see a flush edge somewhere if these stones if they're not if they're not even all the way up and they don't make corners for this stuff uh, then you need to figure out which which side you're gonna see you know what I mean because um, you're gonna see that the face you're gonna see this flush edge of this stone right here on this side and then the one on this wall is gonna butt into it bam I mean, it'll be nice and smooth and a, a nice, pretty square edge, but, you know what I mean? And, it, and then on this side, that wall I stuccoed, you know, but on this side, you're going to need a nice flush factory edge. So you need to consider how you're going to finish your, your uh, corners. Um, and, you know, a lot of times people will measure up the wall and try to find out where their stone falls. Uh, sometimes that's a good idea. You know, to me, it's going to fall where it's going to fall as long as you're level from the bottom. I would say that's probably the most important, uh, you know, the foundation. I mean, technically, that's biblical. Anyway, uh, this right here, that's a boo-boo. That's a no-no. I know better than that. That's thin set right there. It's still somewhat green or a little soft, so you're going to want to get all that stuff out of there or else that stone ain't going to sit flush in there. You know what I mean? So make sure, uh, make sure you keep all your joints clean. Like I'll run it, boom, then I'll clean that joint immediately. Come back, clean it like that. Wipe my trout, come back, clean it again. Keep everything nice and clean. Um, I got some stuff uh, up under there that's gonna need to be cleaned, but I didn't wanna mess with that stone being level like that. So, you know, I'll get up in there with a big flat head later and scrape that stuff out before it's too late. But um, same thing here. You got to finish your corners. You got to figure out what you're going to do. Um, and then I guess on the next part, I will I'll show you me laying some of this stuff and how to apply the thin set. And um, on these walls, they're pretty flat. These guys laid the block. Did you know? It's not a big wall. Couldn't screw it up too bad. So uh, it's pretty flat. Um, you know, I wouldn't use a half inch notch trowel to put the, the thin set on the wall. Um, I would use a quarter inch trowel. That's what I'm using. You know what I mean? You want to lay it on the wall and then uh, back butter the back of this travertine and then lay it on. But I'll show you all that in the next video. All right. What I like to do, I mean, this block is fine. You can go right to the block. Something I forgot to mention in the first video. Uh, technically, you can have what's called efflorescence. Um, you know what I mean? I don't know a ton about it. I just know that if it uh, seeps out of this block or this mason area, it's basically like a salt, it will. Um, It'll come through the tile, it'll stain the tile, you, you got to acid wash it to get it off, but it may continue to happen. Um, this block wall is 30 days old, technically it's cured, but um, I got some Richards uh, waterproofing and sealer, you know, same stuff you do use on pavers or driveways or something like that, but I rolled a bunch of it on this wall, um, because what I don't want to happen is a year down the road from now, this guy call me and say, hey, um, I got stuff leaking out from the back of that travertine. I don't know what it is. What's the problem? And you're in trouble. So I rolled a bunch of waterproofer on this. Ball's in your court if you want to or not. Anyway, also something else I like to do. I just cover it with a thin coat, a thin set. This is good multi-purpose thin set. Uh, you know, like Versa Bond or something. Um, but you got these little, you know, grout joints or block joints or something. Um, so I'll skim it all, you know. You gotta lay it, lay it down perfect. But like I said, you don't have, have to do this. 
but I do. Just because you know, I don't like I don't like problems later. Uh, most people don't. So, run you a good run you a good coat on there. You got any stuff like this on the wall? You got any little. on there that's concrete but you can get stuff like that off there anything that'll hold that tile hold that tile off the wall later you know and you ain't got to be perfect all the way to the top of the there but you know I, mean? I want to do it okay now uh, since I splash that mud, stuff's loose so I can work it better now since I splash that mud, that brings me to another point. You're going to get a little mud on these pavers. You're going to get a little stuff on this stone. Don't freaking go wiping it. Give it a minute. Don't forget about it, that it fell on there. But let it get set up and get a little hard. And then scrape it off easy. Might have enough mud to stick. The second row on this thing. Say it run here, so and I will. That way you can and again on these corners on these corners here you gotta remember you gotta allow for thin set at least so you got this this piece here sticking out yay far but I took an account that there's gonna be some thin set behind this stone that's on this side so I would say the most important deal is uh like that little bit so i got a little bit right there i'm just gonna leave it be let it get hard when this stuff gets hard it'll take off you just scrape it off comes right off comes right off the stone anyhow the most important deal is um don't get in a rush you know what i mean start getting in a rush gonna find yourself in a jam later so once you get a rhythm once you get a, a, a system down on how you're sticking the stone and skimming the wall the thin set and where it's working comfortably for you you'll pick up a little speed you know if you put the hours in but the um, most important thing is have a little patience and get that get that bottom row set pretty good and then take your time as you go till you get comfortable box of stone good god that stone's heavy all right so it's the thin set i got left over it's trying to get hard on me already but it's been sitting a while yeah you can see the difference in color here i just skimmed that on a minute ago you can see it's getting white it's starting to suck up in that block it's gonna get dry so um it doesn't you could skim it on and put it put it on right after that but you know, the quicker it dries, the less that tile's gonna move. So, what I'm gonna do is get me a piece of this here. And you ain't just gonna throw thin set on the wall and um, trowel it up and just take off. You know what I mean? First off, you wanna make sure these are solid. This first run's been sitting three four hours today so uh, I'm confident it ain't moving and I got stones sticking up underneath them so and it's a real thin coat behind there and that's a block wall so it sucked all the moisture out of the mud that thing stuck so I'm not worried about stacking weight on top of it okay um, This here, if you're going to have a tool next to your trowel, you got to have a margin trowel, and you'll see why. Don't start the project or anything like this without one. If you're going to do any kind of mud, have a margin trowel. 
All right, so I'm gonna set this over here. Okay, I want to make sure. Um, I want to make sure I got me a little piece here, a little gauge, and I'll check it on this corner here, and then I'll put it flush with that stone. I wish I could have a phone right here or somebody, but I'll put it flush to the stone where it's this piece here comes even with this plus a little less than a quarter inch because once this piece goes on this side it's going to come out some because you're going to have thin set behind it so you got to put this piece flush with it plus a little you know give you an allowance for some thin set um, now especially on this first run to get it set like that take your pencil and mark the back side of both of these because what's going to happen is you're going to put your thin set on the wall and uh you're going to without these pencil marks you'll throw it up there and you go damn i forgot how far over it is and then you have to pick that gauge up put it back and then slide it in the mud which ain't a big deal but you know what i mean you might as well mark it from the beginning okay and get you some thin set don't cover up your pencil marks can't try all that stuff in enough you know what I mean the more you apply pressure and put it in that wall the better you know so I get I, I make sure that I make sure that stuff's stuck in there bring it up high enough there get you a little bit over in this little corner here and always back butter this this stone you always want to put a little mud on the back of stone pile anything you're sticking here right there kind of get them pretty close and I like to kind of slap it up in there a little bit just to make sure you know you hear it kind of bond you know check it I'm good there I'm good on this you got your pencil mark so you know you're good all right and then I take and I just kind of nice and easy don't go beating your hand to death you know I mean cut your finger off like I almost did last week on this job told the homeowner I said you owe me lunch but uh, you know go ahead and get it in there pretty good you'll see that thin set kind of squirt out of the top of these stones you know talking about but anyways you'll go ahead and kind of tap that in pretty good it's where you can feel it where it quits pressing in it's adhered to the wall good the margin trial taken a little bit left on there Come back, okay, bring that up, boom. That is super important right there, that part right there. I know I keep saying this is super important or this is, you know, the most important part is having patience, but it's all important because one jacked up step, one little misstep, uh, it's gonna cost you later on. Like if I was to forget, uh, leave that thin set hanging out there, that's a pain to get off later, you know what I mean? So you always wanna keep your grout lines um, clean, get all that stuff out of there, you know what I mean? Hit it three times, it don't matter, you know what I mean? You can never take too much precaution with this stuff. Okay, boom, so we got the first one set, still on my line. I know I, I've allowed for the stone that goes on this back side to lock in. Okay, so we'll move down some. And then another thing is, see that mud? That stuff will hang there. It's taking off, it's getting hard on me. Not when like when I was skimming this, it was kind of soupy, which is good because I was able to run it on quick. But generally when you're sticking tile or something like this, you want it to be sticky. You want it to have some body to it. So it's pretty good right there. It won't even fall off the trail, you know, but it's still pretty workable, so. 
not too hard. And yes, um, I am in Florida, and it is, let's see, May 11th. Ah, it is 90 plus degrees out here. It's a little bit of a breeze, but, uh, It is phys this, this stuff is physically taxing. I, mean, I had an uncle that would say, you know, I'd always say I'd be like 16 on job site, and be like, ah, oh, you get used to it. And he'd say, you don't ever get used to this. And you don't. <clears throat> Just learn to deal with it better. Uh, so drink plenty of water, and if you go home at night, you get done with a project like this at your house and uh, your back hurts real bad and your mus muscles are extremely fatigued don't feel bad that's how I'll be tonight <clears throat> okay now you see that little lip on the bottom right there got a little bit of mud uh, that little bit of lip okay you got nice clean lines and then down there you got excess Take this margin trowel, cut a little bit out, right there on the bottom. Take and clean that thing back. That way it doesn't go and squirt out the bottom here because that's hard to clean, you know, especially on this stone. All right, let me get a piece here. All right, again, got that laid on the wall. Lay our piece of tile down. Okay. You want to back butter that that's called back buttering all right this is this is super important it's like everything else okay. if you were to stick that on the wall right now it's probably going to stick it might stick very well but uh i like to be able to go home and sleep at night going that ain't never coming off the wall unless a hurricane or an earthquake or something hits and most likely here in South Florida it'd be a hurricane, but I know it ain't coming off the wall ever. You know, kids run around, kick it, you know, just whatever. So, kind of lay it up there. Uh huh. Now here's another little thing. There's a big joint right here already. So what I gotta do is take this down. I should have checked it before I put it on there. I should have laid it up in there, make sure it had a tight fit here and here. This stone's not perfect, you know. It's pretty symmetrical and nice, but it's not perfect. So this piece here is hitting here before this piece hits here. So I got a gap about that big in between these bottom ones. So I need to go cut about a fat eighth inch off this end, which I'll do right now with this chop. Now, took just enough off that end just sit up in here. Let's see here. Much better. Okay. Got it like that. And then kind of slap it in there a little bit. Now when you press this down to make this tight, careful because this sucker is still loose on that fence head. It'll move, it'll slide on you, and it'll push out past where you need to be. So I'm gonna hold this one and pull it in tight. Which I'm tight. Okay, boom. Slip it in like that. I guess technically if I wasn't a Neanderthal, I'd probably have a little rubber mallet or something, but you know. You know what they say about construction workers. Strong back, weak mind. But it pays the bills. So hold this, pull tight, don't let that move. Good there. All right, margin trowel. Clean that off. All right. Clean that off. And one more time. You can leave that stuff a little bit right there. Kind of clean it up a tad. And like I said, see, it'll move kind of quickly. You just, you know, it'll move quick enough for you if you get that first row set. I'm about to lose this thin set, this thin set's about met its 
end here. So. Good deal. Wish I had somebody here to help me, but pay people on Thursday. Sometimes they don't show up on Friday. Beautiful arrangement in the construction industry. We're not all scholars, you know. Anyhow, all right. So you back buttered this one. It's like we did the rest. Scoot over there. Okay. And yeah, it's a messy deal. stuff that's caked up in there throw that piece in there it'll squirt out the side or squirt out the bottom and then cleaning that stuff out is you just don't want to have to do it okay this is what I have here see and I did it again running my mouth not focused like normal now this one's going to line up good I don't know if the camera can see it but just kind of tap it on there make sure it don't fall off but see you got to I hold this, that way this whole two piece, these two pieces don't slide on us. Hold this sucker right there, bring it over. <clears throat> okay, good, tight and tight. But like I did on the last one. Now if this one was tight and this was a gap down here, you'd have to shave this top piece, that way they were both tight. But this one worked out okay. All right, so you stuck on there. Ah. Yeah. See a little bit squirted out. I know this <clears throat> video is all jacked up. Not a very techie person. So bear with me in the video. Um, I can't remember what the last little video showed, but I want to say I was only about here, so I had to get a bunch of stuff deleted off storage on the phone but anyway so I stuck a bunch of this yesterday after the last video but I'm going to pick up man I want to show one more time how you stick this stuff how you apply it to the wall and how you keep it clean and then um you know just because that way there's a thorough explanation in case I missed anything yesterday all right so I got this piece stuck Cut the edge down here flush with this one. I was staggering them. See the holes there? I was staggering. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cut it flush. I'll put some thought into it. I'm going to cut this flush and then take this piece that goes on this little side wall here. I'm just going to butt it tight. Uh, I'll lose that piece of stone off each one, but it'll save me time. Um, all right. So, uh, I think that's it. Got a box of stone. Let me grab a couple, couple pieces. Yeah, I set them up here. Okay. Again, now it's dry. Stick this right here. You need to be careful. We're going to hold this piece. Got to hold this piece because I just stuck it in thin set. And if you butt it too tight here, this whole piece that you just stuck here, it'll slide on you. 
and sometimes you don't notice it until it's too late and you go down here and you're like, damn. So, set this here. Just want to pull it over real quick. And that joint's pretty tight. These joints are tight. Remember, like I said yesterday, if you push this sucker over, these bastards are heavy. <clears throat> push this over and you got a gap here and you're tight on here that means you need to shave this one down you push this thing tight and you're tight on these ones you got a tight joint here where they interlock but not here that means you need to shave this one down you know what I'm saying? so they're good they're tight enough we'll set this up here All right. First one's good, it didn't move. I got pencil marked here. I marked it with a pencil when I set it. Right. That stuff got some good sticky thin set. Like I said yesterday. Can't trial that stuff in enough. Um, I wouldn't try to all at one shot. Try to kill it. Uh, I wouldn't try to um, clump it all on there, just little bits at a time. You can't trowel it in enough. But like if you throw a big old glob on there, it's gonna run all down the wall. You don't want that. Okay. You just get you a little bit, just add a little bit at a time. And it takes years to master using the trowel. Like I said, I'm a stucco guy first. Or dry you know drywall or hard coat so i've used the hawk in a trowel for a long time so this isn't really easy but being that it's not easy take your time you do little baby steps little pieces of mud uh pick it up it leaves a little bit on the trowel there when you pull it tight off got a little there add it to the bottom and then drop down a little more see up middle bottom Nice full coat. Up, middle, bottom. Let's see, I'm getting a little there. All right, like I told you yesterday, you got that little bit of crap, that little and little bit of blobs laying down there. Take your margin trowel and don't pull it all the way off. You want to have it like this. You want to cock it down at an angle. So you're just taking that little bit of corner out there. Not a ton. Just enough where when you press that stone on there, it don't squirt out the bottom. You know what I mean? Okay. I'll set my stone up here. I'm going to back butter it. Not the brightest idea to lay your stone on top of the finished travertine that you sealed and back butter it. But uh, I'll be careful. I have to get it all over that stone there. There we go. Just a tight coat. You know what I mean? I just want a tight coat on there. I don't want to apply a bunch of thin set when you back butter this stuff. You don't want to put a bunch, you don't want to glob a bunch of thin set on here. You've already got your mud bed. You've already got your depth that you want to sit. This is just to make sure Pull a tight coat on this. That's a little too much. Pull a tight coat on this. That way it sticks to that mud bed. Because, I mean, without this mud on here, on the back of this stone, and that being like that, already having a mud bed, you could flip it up in there, tap it on, and chances are it's never coming off. But anytime you lay any kind of heavy tile or large format tile or anything like this that's heavy, I mean, you better take every precaution you can, you know. So, back butter everything. I back butter four by four inch tile or itty bitty pieces of stone. You know, this guy I had a guy come over here yesterday, and when he see, he knocked that one off, he had to drill down through it to put a light up here. But I told him, I said, just take a nice piece of wood and then put it up under the stone and tap it with a hammer, see if it'll come off. He couldn't get it off and i mean he was he was hit he broke the he broke the piece of travertine so it's because i back buttered it 
and set set it in a mud bed up top and that stuff bonds real tight so I know I'm long-winded but this is the stuff that counts okay, got it there I held that stone that way when I pressed it against here this piece didn't shift on me okay like I said yesterday Flush here. That sucker ain't never coming off the wall. I hope it's level. Or I'm screwed. Um, like I said yesterday, I know I repeat myself. My wife tells me I'm just like my father all the time. You tell the same story over and over again. I don't know. Um, clean that. Don't leave that for later. Don't don't get ahead of yourself. Don't move on. Because if there's one thing I've learned in the construction trade, everything's a step, everything's a process. And you know, excuse my French, but when you try to half-ass something and skip a step and cheat it, it bites you every time in the end. So clean it as you go. You know what I mean? Clean that. It's good. It's nice. It's ready for the next run when we get there. Here we still got mud in these areas. That's fine. You can leave that there because we're going to put another piece on. Okay. Uh -huh. Love that. It's another thing. Keep your hands dry. Uh, your initial reaction is going to be up oh, mud on my hands. Uh, Dunk them in water, get them cleaned off. But I'm gonna tell you, repeatedly cleaning your hands in water, at getting mud on them, cleaning them in water, mud, cleaning them in water, it will dry your hands out super bad. Um, all the all my fingers, they split on the sides. If sometimes I do that because I get in a rush, what you need to do is go to Walmart or whatever um, and get you some real sturdy, heavy duty dish gloves. They're like three bucks for a box. Use those. Your hands will sweat down in there, and that's kind of uncomfortable, but. It's better than having that cementuous product on your hand and washing because you're going to wash and then you're washing your hands off in a bucket of cement water. So it just dries them out real bad. And once they start cracking and splitting, it'll hurt you. You wouldn't think little cracks and tiny things like that on your fingers, it hurts you that bad, but it will. So you probably want to go get yourself a set of dish gloves. Okay. But yeah, keep your hands dry the best you can. All right. See, I didn't put nearly enough mud on there the first time, but that's okay because I didn't get it all over the stone. A little bit at a time. Easy does it. And again, I was raised doing this with a hawk and trowel, so don't be discouraged when you pick a, some kind of trowel up and you're freaking messy just because you're going to be uh, it's not an easy deal it's you know it takes a lot of a lot of time to get good using a trowel you know just like anything just like anything so a little bit on here pull it tight pull it tight pull it tight a little bit on that end see a little little piece there a little piece on that corner i don't know if you can see on the camera we're good there we got our stuff set up all right uh clean back butter our stone let's see i made a boo-boo i put that thin set on there because i'm talking and i didn't check to see if these two joints right here are going to be nice and tight i got a feeling they are um yeah yeah they're nice and tight but and I mean, you got the the stone is comes. It's it's got joints everywhere, but you know, it's depending on. Uh oh. Made a. Wait, wrong way.
I hope I can still see what we're doing here. Anyway, so you got that on there. Um, it just depends on how particular you want to be. Uh, you know, if you're doing something like this, you got a little bit of money invested in it, or somebody does. You know, and I mean, this this video was kind of initially for kind of a do-it-yourselfer, but I mean, I was on there looking just to see how guys, maybe for guys that do this a lot, um, finish their miter edges, and I said, man, there ain't really anything pretty very detailed. Um, so that's why I made it. So, but even if you're doing it yourself or you're working with somebody on the job, there's gonna be some money invested in it. So, little things like that matter. You wanna check these joints before you stick it, or else it's gonna pull off the wall. It's got mud all over. It's nasty. So, um, that's it, man. And you go on down to the end, and then you drop back. You put another one up there, mark it. I'm gonna cut it flush, and then repeat process. You know, so. Uh, if I'm running into anything else, I mean, I'll show you. And this will be a new one. This will be something I've never done. I got, uh, you know, I got to miter these edges. And I, there's a lot, there's a few things on inside corners um, for this travertine, but not a lot for miter and edges. That's what, that's what had me kind of jammed up so I said let me get on here and take a look and there, there's nothing really for outside corners so I gotta figure out how to get that nice and perfect I think I got a good idea it'll be all right but this is a curved wall you know I've never stuck any travertine on a curved wall and there's this little inside angle and then there's this crap we gotta wrap and then another right you know what I mean this thing's freaking cut up and so I'll put some more stuff on there as I go to it gotta cut around these boxes uh, I'd imagine this is all stuff that somebody's going to run into, so might as well watch me lose money on this job <laughs> so you don't have to on yours. Uh, all right. Okay, real quick. Pretty level down through there, but I checked it. that sucker I don't know if you can see it it's off just a tad bit so somehow whether there was a point on a stone down here that was high or something happened on this end maybe it sagged a little bit which I don't know how it would maybe because it didn't have any support right here or here or something anyways it ain't gonna matter on this wall because uh, I'm so close to the top that even if I just left it be, I noticed it last run. I noticed it down here. I just put a level on it for the hell of it. And uh, I could see that, I could see it was just tweaked a little bit with that level. So if that happens, what you're gonna have to do is very, so slightly you want to take you something like this um, and jack that you know you want to jack that end up a tad and you'll your grout joint will be a little bigger right there but you do it a little bit at a time over the next couple runs you know what I mean because if we if I had to go up another however many feet you know uh, farther you go up the worse that the worse that pitch will get so just want to show you that if you run into something like that you you just jack that edge up um you might have to jack it up you know just little little adjustments over the next couple courses and it'll take that little bit of pitch out of there like i said no tell them what did it could have been a bad could have been a bad rock down here it's it was high and that's why you got this gap and you just never know man you never know and like I said, the stone's pretty nice and pretty symmetrical and square, but nothing's perfect. So you just got to be keep your eye on stuff like that. That's why, like I said, a lot of guys will pop lines every six inches. 
and it'll show you immediately if if you're off but i put a level on it every time i run a course and so that's how you'll do it okay had that one perfect and boom moved over here okay see what it did to me that sucker ain't flush we know we got a problem that's a red flag okay so i looked you can see right here from the last run that one little piece of corner down there threw all this off just enough to when you get higher and higher you start to have stuff like this and there's right here that little piece right there see how it's high and then it choop, jacks that whole piece up so what I gotta do is I'm gonna pull that off and I'm gonna take this angle grinder and I'm gonna shave that top down right there just a tad just enough where it'll drop this and I could shave this top if I got to ideally that's not what you want to have to do you know you want everything to be perfect uh, never seen it work perfectly so uh, that's just another little tip another little something you can do keep you an angle grinder keep you a diamond blade on it and uh, be ready to do some shaving if necessary you know so okay now oh where was it I guess it was this one or maybe this one yeah I think it was yeah this one this is where that we had that bad problem right here and this is the, sh the stone I shaved down so I took it down from about here back to here shaved the whole top of this course under you know this course here so it would sit down there's still a little lip but like I said when you're making <clears throat> making adjustments in this stuff you got to stretch it out over a couple courses so I mean I'm done now almost except for this piece but you know if you had to go up a little higher you could adjust that little stuff like that you'd probably be all right and the thing was is when I set this down in here a little lower it jacked this end up or it tried to but these stones in here from the first course they gave me a gap so it laid down in there nice and everything's fine I didn't put the level on it. Let me see. She's a little wobbly, but she's pretty much dead on. So, it works out. Like I said, it's stone. It's not perfect stuff. Got that. And then uh, run that next course. Of course, I won't be lucky enough to have it. Um, be six inches dead, dead money. And you could say whoever picked... Whoever laid this block, well, I guess it's pretty even down through there. I guess that ain't bad. Looks like it gets a little wider towards the end down there. Um, so, all right. What else was I going to tell? Oh, yeah. And this right here. You got to be careful. Like, it's had time to set up. But if you don't pull this stuff out of there, I'm going to leave this one for another minute just because this needs time to set up. That one should be stuck pretty good where it doesn't sag and move. Yeah, it feels pretty good. But boy, I'm going to tell you what, you leave something like that in there, good luck getting it out. So, if you're going to shim stuff up with cardboard, cardboard's probably not the best idea. Yeah, I'd find, get you some wood shims or something, that'd be a lot better. But, uh, you know, work with what you got. So, that's what I got. Right, 